Good afternoon, everyone. This is Laurie Schaller from the National Disability Institute Assisted Technology Loan Program, and this is one of our orientations. Today's session will be recorded and posted at our website with other recorded uh, uh, sessions highlighting uh, progressive assistive technology that is available for people to purchase, in many cases across the United States. Our loan program is available uh, for residents of New York State and New Jersey. My contact information, and you're welcome to give me a call after today's presentation, is 202-449-9522. My email is l-s-c-h-a-l-l-e-r at n-d-i-dash-i-n-c dot o-r-g. I'm a manager here at National Disability Institute for the Financial Empowerment uh, Initiatives. Next slide, Katie. In submitting questions, or if you have technical difficulties, if you could please use the Q&A box. And uh, you're welcome to send me an email, too, and I will respond during today's session. Katie Achenbach is providing technical assistance today. Next slide. So National Disability Institute's vision statement is, we envision a society in which people with disabilities have the same opportunities to achieve financial stability and independence as people who do not have disabilities. We collaborate and innovate to build a better financial future for people who have disabilities and their family members as well. We provide a reliable source of COVID-19 information and resources, including financial education and financial coaching counseling services. And those services are being provided virtually and they are free. And they are available at the NDI Financial Resilience Center site. So if you Google, for example, nationaldisabilityinstitute.org, you will find that information posted there. Next slide. So NDI, National Disability Institute, received a grant for the Alternative Financing Program through the U.S. Department of Education's Rehabilitation Services Administration way back in 2014. So we provide virtual services, and we provide referrals, helping people find the assistive technology that they need, and um, we provide financial education in the communities of New Jersey and New York. And you can find our AT resource guides for New Jersey and New York residents at our website, which is nationaldisabilityinstitute.org, financial wellness, and the Assistive Technology Loan Program. If we cannot find a grant or other source of funding to help a person purchase the assistive technology they need, we can provide a loan in the amount of $500 to $30,000. And our interest rate is 4 to 6% interest for the purchase or refinance of assistive technology. We, so we understand that many people have already a pur purchased assistive technology, whether that be a hearing aid, a vision device, a modified vehicle. In, in many cases, the interest rates and in terms of those loans are very, very expensive. So we can refinance such a loan to help people save significant money. So our lending terms are very flexible, allowing people to develop or improve their credit with timely loan repayments. So for example, a person does not need to have a credit score in order to qualify for one of our loans. Next slide. So NDI has partnered with Wheelpad to inform you of the newest assistive technology, accessible home, or office accommodation available. And we understand that assistive technology is very broad, and it includes uh, many options. 
And uh, we will be covering today what options for AT services and purchasing are available. And again, like I said, this session will be recorded. So you can refer, for example, fellow uh, colleagues at your work site, uh, your clients broadly, including uh, individuals who have a disability, to view this recording. Next slide. So what is assistive technology? A2 includes adaptive recreational equipment, computers, <clears throat> hearing and vision aids, electronic muscle stimulant devices. We have a recording at our website about those. Smart home systems, scooters, smartphones, stair climbers, standing wheelchairs, vehicle modification, and business equipment for individuals who have a disability. AT also includes various types of home modifications to ensure accessibility. And today we are spotlighting Wheelpad as a way to address accessibility of an office or residence. Next slide. I'd like to introduce RJ Adler. Wheelpad Business Development um, Director, and he will share the energy efficient accessible housing units that are, are available to help people quickly have more housing choice, whether they are trying to age in place, adapt a new home to meet their needs, recover from an accident, or add more space for a growing and changing family. And he can talk about options to lease or purchase a wheel pad. RJ, thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much. Uh, that's a great introduction. Um, uh, uh, for folks that uh, have questions or anything uh, during the event, um, you know, feel free to pop them in the, the q and I'll try to answer those as we uh, move forward. Uh, and thanks so much for taking the time to learn about Wheelpad today. Um, so um, what you're seeing here on this slide uh, is our logo up in the corner um, with our tagline, um, Wheelpad, your home accessible now. Um, and uh, this is kind of chock full of my bad dad humor. Um, it is a free range wheel pad uh, in that we don't have this uh, connected to a house. This was a demonstration project that we set up in 2018. Um, the view is sold separately. Uh, you have to come up to Vermont to enjoy that. Vermont is where we are based, uh, down in Wilmington, Vermont, which is uh, in the center of the south of the state, uh, near Brattleboro, if any of you have ever traveled up here. Um, my name is RJ Adler. I am the business development director for Wheelpad. Um, and if you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, so uh, here's our agenda for today. I'll give a little bit of an introduction, which I mean, I think you guys have already heard. Um, I'll talk about our, our vision as a company. Uh, as well as, you know, Wheelpad as a product, um, what it is, and then, and then how we roll, as it were. Um, uh, starting very briefly, introduction about me. I grew up in New England. Uh, I've lived in Vermont for about 15 years now after going to college here. Um, I found my way to Wheelpad. I was uh, planning on starting my own business to help folks build backyard accessory dwelling units. I found Wheelpad and what they were doing, and I thought, it's a whole lot easier to, to work with a great team that's already gotten started. So I jumped on board. Um, that was in March of last year. Um, and Wheelpad got started uh, thanks to the two folks that you're seeing in this picture, um, Riley Poor and Julie Leinberger. And uh, the person that was taking this picture, who is uh, 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 Joseph Sincata. Uh, so uh, Julie and Joseph, uh, our business and life partners. Uh, since the late 80s, they've been running uh, line sync architecture out of Wilmington, Vermont, uh, specializing in green building and universal design. And in 2015, uh, Riley, who is their godson, uh, was in a traumatic accident which resulted in quadriplegia. In you know, just around when that happened, he was about to move out to Portland uh, to start a new job. And he thought, oh, I, I'll just find an accessible rental. I'm sure there's one out there. Well, there wasn't. And Riley ended up living in a hotel for nine months uh, because uh, they couldn't find an accessible rental. And during that time, they purchased a home and renovated it 
to be universally accessible for Riley and for Riley's needs uh, designed by Julian Joseph out of Line Sync Architecture. And in that time, there was this conversation of what if there had just been this thing that you could have you know, tacked onto your mom's house, tacked onto a rental, tacked onto another house that would have made this process so much easier for you. It could have come on wheels, it would have had a bathroom in it, it would have, you know, and through those conversations is, is how Wheelpad was uh, developed um, with, with a lot of input from really smart people, including, you know, these three, but also OTs, PTs, doctors, uh, other architects, other people that use wheelchairs every day. And we continue to, uh, you know, make our models sort of uh, mo better um, when it comes to, you know, redesigning them to make them either better for people to live in, easier to build. We try to get a lot of feedback from our customers. So it's, it's a, a two-way kind of communication. Um, uh, our, our vision as a company is really just to help people have more housing choice and help more buildings in America be universally accessible. Uh, universal accessibility, as you'll see later, it looks cool. It, it's, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not creating spaces that have, uh, we're not creating spaces that, that are sort of different. Um, uh, anyway, so uh, let's move on to the next slide. Um, and uh, here you're seeing four pictures in this slide, the four different models that Wheelpad has designed and uh, are, are sort of able to be delivered uh, to your home. Uh, so we'll start with the top left-hand picture. That's a picture of Julie standing in front of an uh, ad pad, which is our smallest model. Uh, it's just a bedroom and bathroom home attachment. It's 24 feet long, eight and a half feet wide. And uh, it's attached to a home that this is one of the first homes that we ever attached an ad pad to. It actually is no longer attached to that home. Um, but uh, in the connector that we built to this home, you'll see they needed a ramp to get into their home. So we built a ramp and a door going into that connector. I'll talk a little bit more about the connections and how they work later. Um, but you know, the ad pad is that smallest model. Uh, it's built on a trailer and you can, um, pull it behind a regular pickup truck without a commercial driver's license. Uh, so if, if you had the, had the equipment, you could you know, come and pick it up from our factory yourself. Um, it's part of the accessibility. So I will then jump to the bottom right-hand picture, and that's a rendering of our knee pad. The knee pad uh, is a full accessible accessory dwelling unit. It's a... Uh, uh, we haven't built one yet, which is why we don't have a real picture there, but we have it designed, we have it at our builders ready to go. And uh, that is, uh, you know, a full, there's a, a kitchen in it and you can, you know, live there independently. So it's very similar to the ad pad, but it doesn't need to be directly connected to a house. It can provide a little bit more independence for, you know, a son or daughter living in the backyard, mom or dad not wanting to move to a nursing home, what have you. Um, so that is, um, you know, also eight and a half feet wide. Also, you can pull it behind a regular pickup truck with a regular driver's license. Um, the, the third picture I'll talk about is on the top right hand side, and that's our XL pad. So that can come with or without a kitchen. Uh, it's 12 feet wide, and that means it's large enough to have enough space for a queen size bed, also has a bathroom in it, and uh, we are, uh, with that one, it's a little bit more of a permanent installation. Uh, it's something where you, unless you happen to have a large enough truck and a commercial driver's license, um, you know, it's one of those wide loads that you'll often see driving down the highway uh, because it's 12 feet wide. So uh, that model, you know, does provide a little bit more space, but the, you know, delivery is uh, needing to be done by a professional and the installation as well. Um, the, uh, last picture I'll talk about is in the bottom left-hand side of this slide, and that's our multi-pad. And what the multi-pad is, is it kind of shows, um, what we can do as a company, right? We're not just creating modular spaces. We have all of the architecture know-how to build a house from scratch. And that's what we did with the multi-pad. This was for a, 
a school in New Hampshire that wanted more faculty housing, but they needed it to be built quickly over a span of three months during their summer vacation. And uh, so we took three of our smallest units, smallest ad pad units, and we built them together to create one building that had three distinct apartments. Um, and we were able to build it in three months. Uh, so next slide. So this is the inside of an ad pad. This is, you know, our bread and butter kind of unit. Um, and uh, while this is one of our earlier versions, we're still waiting to get pictures of, of one of our newest versions. The, uh, the central tenants of our units are, are very much the same. Uh, so the unit that you're seeing here uh, is, this is the bedroom uh, standing over uh, on one side, looking all the way across into the bathroom. And some of the things that I'd like to point out uh, in terms of the accessibility features beyond just wider doors and that kind of thing, uh, there's a track in the ceiling and that track has a truck in it and it can hold up to 600 pounds to aid in the transfer from the bedroom to the bathroom. Uh, the, you, you can see it goes all the way across, all the way into the bathroom. Uh, another thing that I'll point out is the, uh, the scalloping on the walls. Uh, you'll see the, um, the plywood on the walls is there for two purposes. One, um, it's, you know, it fills negative space well, it's decorative, but also, uh, especially with people that are new to using wheelchairs, they'll often bump up the walls, you know, they can damage things easily. It's much easier for us to replace a $20 piece of plywood than it is for us to, uh, you know, replace a damaged wall or, or fix a damaged wall. So, you know, the, the design aspects that were put into this are, you know, very well thought through um, and, and we're constantly changing and, and updating the, um, the, the units. So each one we build is gonna be uh, better. So could you go to the next slide? This is a picture of the bathroom. Bathroom is a full wet room. So uh, that means there's plenty of space for, you know, a shower chair or an aid if washing is needed. There is, uh, you know, you're able to hose the whole thing down uh, in order to clean it. Uh, and, you know, everything is, is watertight and safe. All of what you're seeing in the wheel pad, uh, unless it's built into the walls, um, you know, we set this up as a demonstration. So it is not meant to be a, uh, it's, it's meant to be an empty space that you get to decide what to do with. Um, uh, so, you know, if, if you need a, a, a certain kind of uh, chair or desk in the space, we, we don't necessarily provide that. Um, we just provide the empty space for you to be able to put your stuff into. Could you go to the next slide? Uh, so this slide shows um, this uh, other, you know, the bedroom side of the wheel pad, essentially. Uh, you can see we've got big windows uh, to let in a lot of natural light. Uh, and we're able to, uh, you, what we're trying to do is create the coolest room in the house. Uh, we want it to feel like home. We don't want it to feel like an institution. Uh, the walls uh, in uh, some of our units are an unfinished plaster to give it the feeling like it's uh, a home, right? It's, uh, you know, you're not gonna find hardwood floors, hardwood ceilings um, in your, uh, it's sort of institutionalized setting and that because that's not what we wanted to create. Uh, could you go to the next slide? So there's two means of egress on the wheel pad uh, and we've had people connect to their house through both of these doors, both the sliding door and the swing door, depending on what works best. Because we're an architecture firm, uh, we're also able to design that connector for you and work with a local contractor in your area to make that connection. And by doing that, you're able to have a, you know, a full on process that only, you know, that little connector can, you can build it in two weeks. Uh, so the whole process doesn't have to take a lot of time, but we can also build into that connector what you might need in the, uh, in, in, in your home. We have um, a little later, you'll see a video of a uh, delivery that we made in Burlington. Uh, and in that connector, we actually built uh, a little bit of an extra kitchen space. Uh, 
uh, and a studio space because in that case with that family, uh, mom was a painter. She wanted a little bit of extra, extra space for her painting. So we built her a little studio that, you know, she could, uh, you know, do her painting and her walls are plastered. The walls of her wheel pad are plastered with, with her beautiful paintings, which is really great. So uh, could you go to the next slide? Um, this is that video of that delivery. So if um, uh, you can play that. This video is sped up a little bit. So it doesn't sound like it's um, uh, This would be the vendor for a lot. Uh, um, and you can see as he's backing in there, he gets that wheel pad about six inches from the house because that's where it needed to be for delivery. So um, you know, these guys are like real professionals and it's, and it's pretty awesome, uh, to see the way that it's put together. Um, that's Dave running around. Dave is the homeowner in this case. Uh, oh, and this is the next video, which we'll show you later. Um, uh, so if you can pop back into the slides. I'm, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat or anything like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep keep going, but just a reminder that if folks have questions, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, happy to answer them. Um, this is a connector. This is a simple connector that we built for a family in Br Brattleboro, Vermont. Um, they, uh, uh, you'll, you'll see this family later. It's the Everingham family. Uh, they needed their dad out of a nursing home. So they, uh, we, we actually built this over the span of a week. And um, this connector that you're seeing is a very simple connector designed by Joseph, uh, you know, the, the designer of the wheel pad and the principal architect. Uh, and it's, a, it's essentially a hallway, two, two walls, a floor and a roof sandwiched between the house and the unit. And through that connector, um, you know, John Everingham can roll in for meals, but then he can roll in, have his own space uh, and, one of the things that Bob, John's son has said, who owns the house, he said, you know, what I love about the wheel pad is that it's so acoustically isolating. Dad and I live on a different schedule. Uh, you know, we're up in the morning early with the kids. Dad stays up late in, into the night and we're sort of not bothering each other because these two spaces are separate enough, but we're able to look after them. Um, through this connector uh, comes water, sewer and electric. So we connect to the host home's utility systems and those connections, uh, they take about half a day for a licensed electrician and a licensed plumber to make. We're not talking about new science here. We're not talking about a new product. Uh, you know, it's installing one of those, you know, uh, big dryer plugs that you guys may have, uh, you know, may be familiar with if you say have an electric car or have a dryer. Um, or, uh, you know, in the, the, the connection to the water, we have an onboard water heater on the wheel pad. So it just needs a cold water connection. Um, so a lot of this is very simple stuff for a licensed contractor to be able to complete. And we have a lot of, uh, a, a long history of working with contractors to, you know, help make visions like this possible. Uh, so could you go to the next slide? So here you're seeing the inside of an XL pad. That is, uh, again, that wider unit. So it's 12 feet wide. It can easily fit a queen size bed. We built the first XL pad for a family in Jericho, Vermont. Uh, Edmund Little is uh, the name of, uh, Edmund and Anna Little are their names. Um, Edmund had ALS and he, was uh, a veteran. So we actually were able to construct this using the specially adaptive housing grant uh, for uh, 
uh, that, that's available for veterans with a service-connected disability. Um, you can see in this unit, it's a lot of the same things that you're seeing in the, ex or seeing in the ad pad, our smaller unit. It's a bedroom and a bathroom, home attachment. Um, you, know, you can see that plywood on the walls, it's an unfinished plaster. One other thing that I'll point out, behind that chair, uh, the, not the wheelchair, the, uh, the, um, uh, the antique chair, you see that there is a, an outlet. It's a regular outlet, uh, it's you know, four plugs, and it's 30 inches off the ground. Well, the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, says that outlets have to be 18 inches off the ground. But if you've ever sat down and tried to pull something out from 18 inches off the ground, it's pretty hard. So from that position, we found that it was easier 30 inches off the ground. And you know, so that's just like another bit of feedback that we've received from people that use wheelchairs every day uh, as to you know, ways that we can improve the living experience. Uh, you know, it's the same amount of cost to put a, uh, you know, to put a, a, a plug in at 18 inches versus 32 inches. Uh, it's just about sort of, you know, designing uh, with the end goal in mind. Um, you'll also see that there is an elf on the uh, wall between the uh, unit, uh, between the bedroom and the bathroom. Um, not all of our units come with elves, but we can source them if necessary. Uh, can you go to the next slide? This is the connector that we made for the littles. Uh, you can see you can customize the outside to make it match your home. And, uh, you know, we, we can build our connectors with a, um, you know, with a ceiling that is sort of translucent, add in more light. Again, we'll work with the family as to what works best for them. Uh, and we can also build into a connector what you might need. So like I was telling you about with the family in Burlington that wanted that extra little space uh, for mom to be able to paint, um, you know, if you needed a downstairs washer and dryer, if you needed, um, uh, you know, something else, we can, you know, work with you to develop that space in the easiest way. Um, because once you're, you know, once you're scrambling an egg, to make an omelet, it's pretty easy to throw in a few other ingredients. So making a slightly larger connector isn't going to cost you that much more than making a slightly smaller connector. Uh, so can you move ahead to the next slide? This is the same picture of the multi-pad that you were seeing earlier. But what you're also seeing here is uh, a plan, an architect's plan of what that building looks like in the middle. So it's got in those blue and yellow shaded areas, you'll see three of them on that plan. That's the ad pad. Those are the three ad pads. And then on the white and orange shaded areas, that's that center building that we built to connect the three of them together. Uh, so you can see it creates three distinct areas where those folks can have, uh, you know, those uh, are, th are three distinct uh, apartments the connection between those three, it can really be whatever the, you know, the final, the final uh, product, what, whatever's needed, right? It doesn't have to be three kitchens. We can do one kitchen. Um, we can do um, up to five units. We can stack them. You know, there's, there's a lot of benefit of marrying modular manufacturing with site-built construction. Uh, so um, if, if you're not, if, if in our products, you're kind of seeing like, oh, I'd like something a little bit different, we can create that. We're always excited to create kind of new units. Uh, could you move ahead? So this is that other video clip. Um, while um, Kate gets it set up, um, uh, this is Bob and John Everingham. And they are uh, our customers in Brattleboro. And we were able to um, deliver and build this over a weekend at the beginning of uh, the COVID lockdown. This is so exciting. This is gonna be a huge uh, opportunity for dad and beautiful, love it. Well, thank you for designing this wheel pad as well as helping us to put it together. It's been a pleasure. It's really, I'm really glad you're able to be back home. Yeah. I'm really, uh, yeah. looking forward to it, really. Thank you. This is so exciting.
There we go. Um, Everingham's are great people. Um, we've we've worked with a lot of fantastic customers, and I'm you know always happy to put folks in touch with uh, with folks as a reference. Um, and if you're you know if you're close enough to any of our installed units, uh, we can also try to set up a visit. Um, so can you go to the next slide? Uh, this is a timeline of the installation for, uh, you know, for the, the Everinghams. It starts all the way back in March of last year. Uh, we had the COVID lockdown on March 14th. Uh, we got a frantic call from Bob on the 16th. You know, my dad's in this nursing home. I really want to get him out. I'm worried about this illness. On the 19th of March, we called the town of Brattleboro, explained the situation, explained our product. They said, it's on wheels. You know, there's a national pandemic going on. Why don't you just, you don't need a permit, you can start installation. I know that in rural areas, it's a lot easier to have that kind of outcome, but we do work with our customers and the local contractor to put together a, a permit application. And uh, even in downtown Burlington, which is our largest city uh, here in Vermont, it's uh, the longest for a temporary installation has uh, only been uh, about a month to be able to get that permit. So on the 21st, they got dad out of the nursing home and into their dining room. Uh, they signed a lease for a wheel pad just a week later. And then from the 4th to the 7th, we helped them. Uh, we delivered the wheel pad and because they were about, uh, you know, a few miles down the road from our wheel pad world headquarters, we were able to help them make that connector, uh, build that connector. Uh, so could you go to the next slide? So the pricing, um, the pricing for our units uh, right now, we have um, had to raise our prices recently because of the shortages uh, that are sort of plaguing much of the building industry. Um, but that's something where we're, we're constantly modulating it and we're constantly redesigning our unit, as I've been saying, uh, to try to make it easier to build. Uh, we, we do hope to have more options in the future that, that show a greater uh, price range. For our smallest unit, the ad pad, you can lease it uh, for $3,250 a month uh, if you know you only need it for a short period of time, or you can purchase it uh, for $89,000. Uh, the, the good folks at NDI are um, able to help you with, with a different, you know, with a financing stack to put that together. Um, uh, there are financing programs in a lot of different states. Uh, and in Vermont, uh, you know, I have one available for Vermonters, but for folks uh, beyond, we will work with you to work with a local bank or credit union to, to make it happen. Uh, the Me Pad, this is that slightly longer version with a kitchen, is delivered to your house for $114,000. Um, and delivery is included in all three of those options. Uh, and that's uh, anywhere across the lower 48 um in 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 those cost ranges uh the xl pad is that wider version it's a it takes a little bit more to uh deliver because it it, it does require a professional driver so with um the xl pad and the multi pads we coordinate delivery for you but we don't have that included in the price because it's a kind of a larger process and we coordinate that and we'll pass that cost on to you, but we don't take a cut of the delivery cost. That's some, you know, you would pay those folks directly. Um, with any of our uh, units that are sort of installed temporarily or, uh, you know, semi-permanently, we offer to purchase these units back from you when you're done with them. You know, in many cases, you might not know how long you're going to need your wheel pad, how long dad's going to be living with you, um, you know, how long it is until you recover from that surgery. So, and we want our wheel pads to always be able to be in use. So we're going to uh, develop, uh, you know, we've, we've already moved our lease units around from house to house to house. So if you get to the point where you no longer need your unit, you can either sell it back to us or you can decide, you know, my house is worth more with this on it. Um, and you can sell it on the real estate market, but it's, it's a, we're, we're trying to create more options for people. We're all about creating housing choices and optionality. And that also means purchasing a unit back um, if the family no longer needs it. And we know about somebody that might need it somewhere else. Uh, uh, the, and then the, the multi-pad I will mention is uh, for a trio is 395,000. So that's three. 
um, put together. And for a quint, that's five put together is 550,000. Uh, so uh, can you go to the next slide? So as I said, um, we are all about optionality. We're, we're about creating other choices for people. Um, and the, if you look at, you know, installing an ad pad versus install, you know, versus, a, you know, building on an addition or building on a, you know, doing an internal renovation, you know, the, the ad pad or, or installing a wheel pad is going to be a much quicker installation because essentially we're delivering a project to you that's 95% done. And, you know, depending on the installation, we can be done in a matter of a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, your, your, your budget and your schedule are a lot more uh, firm when you have more of the project done offsite. Uh, so that the average cost of building extra square footage is about $300 per square foot. Um, so if you were sort of looking at the equivalent of a renovation or the equivalent of you know building a, another small structure or a small attachment it's actually a little bit less expensive to to put on a wheel pad there's also you know m many fewer decisions that you have to make especially if your family is in a situation where you're trying to understand a new reality because somebody's just gotten in an accident or you need to move quickly um, you know, you don't have to, you don't want to be deciding like, oh, what, what finish should we have in the new bathroom, right? That's, it's fun to make those decisions, but not when you have, have other pressing decisions to make. Um, and the last is the wheel pad buyback commitment gives you another option for resale, you know, whereas, you know, otherwise you might be making decisions of, oh, my value might be tied to the, to the local real estate market. Um, and, you know, so there's, there's a little bit less flexibility when you're, you know, purchasing an already designed unit, but um, there's a lot of benefits uh, to, you know, having a, a quicker installation. Could you go to the next slide? Similarly to nursing homes, we're just trying to provide another option. Um, there's certainly people that, you know, moving into a nursing home is gonna be a great option for them, but a lot of people would prefer to stay at home, prefer to maintain their routine, stay in their community. Uh, if you look at the cost of what a nursing home is versus the cost of adding a wheel pad to your home, you're, you're uh, you know, much more able to retain the value of, uh, of a wheel pad versus the value that you're just sending away to a nursing home that you're never going to see again. Uh, so you know, in year one, the costs are pretty similar, but very quickly in year two, three, four, you're able to have a a more uh, cohesive uh, understanding of what your costs are going to be, and there's they you know much less once you've already finished the project. Um, and then again, there's that wheel pad buyback commitment. Um, whereas you know once you see that value go to the nursing home, you're never going to be able to get it back. Um, could you go to the next slide? All right. Um, so that's a whole lot of me talking. Uh, I really appreciate y'all listening. Uh, I'm happy to uh, answer some questions, go back and show other slides. And thanks so much for NDI for uh, helping to put this together. So this is Lori. I, I wanna share with you RJ's uh, direct contact telephone number that is 802-458-7192. So you're certainly welcome to give RJ a call. I love these units. You know, it's great to see you've got the hot water connect for the units all worked out. This is all energy efficient. And these are so bright and cheery, these units. Um, I'm hoping to see more in my community. Uh, I've got a colleague in Ithaca, and he was saying he saw one of these units being delivered down his road. So Congratulations, RJ. That's wonderful. Um, so I'd like to proceed further with our slide deck. Please uh, place any questions you have in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Um, so there are certainly grants available uh, in communities to be able to purchase these types of units for someone who has a disability. 
And you are welcome to give me a call, and we will find the uh, financing available to meet your need. Um, you can use personal savings. Uh, for those individuals who have had a disability that began prior to age 26, people are able account eligible. And an able account is a savings and investment account that does not impact uh, public benefits. For example, a person can save up to $100,000 in an ABLE account, and that does not stop that person's SSI monthly payment. For those who receive Medicaid, um, Medicare, uh, SSDI, Social Security Disability Insurance Payments, they can save any amount up to the ABLE plan limit within that ABLE account. And a qualified disability expense, so monies can be spent from that ABLE account, for example, to purchase a home or to purchase one of these wheel pad units. So uh, for someone who needs a structure for self-employment and that person receives SSI, Supplemental Security Income Benefits, or is SSI eligible, there's a work support called a PASS plan. Wouldn't it be great to submit a PASS plan proposal for a person who's going to start their business within a wheel pad unit? So then, of course, there's the NDI Assistive Technology Loan Program. So in the event we cannot find financing available in your community to help you make this purchase, we can offer a loan up to $30,000 to, to join with any monies you have saved uh, towards the purchase of a wheel pad or any type of assistive technology. And I have a link to the loan application posted here as well. Next slide. So within our orientation recordings, we have a spending plan development recording. We invite you to take a look at that. That can help you find more monies available to save regularly, again, without jeopardizing your benefits if you receive disability benefits. And um, that link is posted here, and that's available at the National Disability Institute uh, website. Next slide. So we post our loan application and uh, fact documents at our website. If you wish to apply for a loan, please give me a call before you do so, so we can have that dialogue around finding a grant or other source of funding to reduce your need for a loan. Um, and we will need copies, for example, of your rental lease or mortgage, uh, property tax statements if you have a mortgage, indicating, for example, that your rent or mortgage are current, that your utility bills, heat, electric, gas, water, uh, internet are current. Um, if you receive assistance, uh, uh, an award letter, for example, for food stamps or SNAP benefits, your SSI, SSDI, uh, if you are retired, uh, proof of your retirement income so that we can qualify you, you for a loan. Um, we simply need to know um, that a person has money left over the end of the month that they can afford a loan payment. So um, a loan for a three hundred thousand, uh, excuse me, a thirty thousand dollar loan at six percent interest. That uh, monthly loan payment is only three hundred and three dollars a month over a ten year period. Um, so we would want to see um, avoided checks so that uh, payments can come directly from your checking account. Um, one of the banks is asking for two years' worth of W-2s. We understand that many people do not file taxes, so that uh, would not be needed. We need photo IDs, on the other hand, and the security, uh, Social Security card uh, or tax identifying information um, number for an applicant. 
and a bill of sale for the assistive technology. And I can help walk you through that. So we could, in some cases, pre-qualify you for a loan. And then, for example, you could go out and select the modified vehicle you're interested in purchasing and then provide that uh, bill of sale. And then the loan is written out directly to the AT vendor and uh, Monthly loan payments are made directly to the banks that are working with us to provide these low interest rate loans. Next slide. And the loans are available to anyone age 18 or older. We do not need to know what type of disability may a person may have. This could easily be a senior who needs the loan. Um, and in a, if applying for a loan with NDI, we pull an applicant's credit report. I review that with you over the phone and we make recommendations. I have done credit counseling for many, many years. Uh, steps that you can take to improve the likelihood that your loan application would be uh, approved. And if you wish to view your credit report and your credit score free of charge prior to applying, you can always pull that from Credit Karma and the link is posted here on this slide. Next slide, Katie. So how long does it take to get one of these loans? It, this loan application can be processed within two days, and the loan check can be issued, for example, to Wheelpad shortly thereafter within you know one or two days. So we have a loan committee so that uh, when people indicate they're ready for their information summary to be submitted to the loan uh, committee, the loan committee makes the decision uh, whether or not an, a loan application is pre-qualified. So are, you're welcome. If you don't need a loan, you can serve on the loan committee. And um, people are very interested in serving, and we have had a group of people over the last five years um, that help uh, make the decision so we know that a person has X amount of money left over the end of the month, what their loan payment is. None of your personal identifying information is released, but this loan committee can make recommendations. So in one instance, for example, we had someone who wanted a vision device. And we knew that the person did not have any money left over the end of the month. So the loan committee member uh, asked um, Vocational Rehabilitation, DVRS in New Jersey, if they would uh, purchase um, this uh, vision device for that individual and that device was provided free of charge. Next slide. So really the loan committee can help move things uh, along. And if they know of other resources that I have not not been able to uncover, they make recommendations. So I wanted to share with you, um, many AT vendors uh, offer their own line of financing. And we're seeing interest rates ranging from 16% all the way up to 30% interest. And many of these vendors, somehow the person who qualifies for this line of financing is not aware of what rate of interest they may have just um, purchased their assistive technology with. And they only know what their monthly payment is. So we want to be upfront that we can help you in many cases to save significant money when you apply for a loan through National Disability Institute. So for example, I got a call from someone who had purchased a modified vehicle from a, a dealership and they only knew, like I said, what the uh, monthly loan payment was. So they had accidentally signed a contract for a $6,000 modified vehicle at 30% interest uh, over a number of years. So this chart here shows when you qualify for a loan through NDI at 6% or 4% interest, how much you can save, and this sample is, for example, $10,000 over a five-year term. At 16% interest, the monthly payment is $243, and the person's total loan payment is $14,590 over the term of five years. 
Some of the AT vendors offer a line of financing, and then for the difference of the purchase price, they urge someone to get use their credit card at 24% interest for $10,000. We're talking about a, a payment of $17,262. So if you instead come to NDI for a $10,000 loan request, over five years at 6% interest, the monthly payment is only $193. And the payment total is $11,580. So we can save over that period of five years at least $3,000 for an individual who finances with us. So as case managers, as you meet people who do not know what rate of interest they've just purchased assistive technology for, or those who have purchased a hearing aid they didn't realize after six months introductory rate, their interest rate now goes up to 18%, payable back to the first date that they acquired that line of credit. We can refinance those assistive technology loans to help people save significant money. Next slide, Katie. So this gives you an idea of our loan application process. Uh, on average, uh, a decision is made within two days, um, but this gives you an idea. And we urge you to take your time in selecting your assistive technology that you feel will work for you. Ask that AT vendor if that, for example, motorized wheelchair could be delivered to your home so you can try it for a month to see that that is going to work. If it's a, a, a recreational equipment that is adapted, that you have a chance to try that out to make sure that's really going to work for you. And we can do the loan application in the meantime to make sure that you're making the purchase of equipment that's really going to work for you. Next slide. So this is my contact information. If you live outside of New York or New Jersey, um, there are alternative finance programs available in almost every state. There are 48 programs. You can go to our website, assistivetechloans.com to find those other programs, or you can give me a call and I'll give you the contact information for these other programs available across the United States. If you are a service provider or uh, an organization provider and you would like me to do a virtual or in-person presentation now that things are opening up, I am available to, to cover New York State and New Jersey. And um, I thank you very much for your time, uh, RJ. Thank you for sharing your information with people. I'm hoping that people take this into consideration. Um, we have been sharing this information across the United States with the presentations that NDI provides. For example, we provided 100 trainers information about wheel pad devices for those who live in Illinois so that this is an option for those who are considering separate living units for a family member who may have a disability, and that these units can be installed on site um, for the family. So I thank you very much, RJ, um, and we invite uh, questions and answers. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a great day. Thanks so much for uh, letting me tell our story. Great. Thank you.